an increase in the number of coffee shops being opened in Zambia is an indication that business is growing. However, there is need for these coffee shop owners to be sensitized on the kind of materials they reproduce, such as books. On this week's edition of News in Depth, we focus our attention on the law of copyright and the reprographics in Zambia. I am your host for this week, Macpherson Mukuka. Join me after the break as I discuss a number of issues in this particular field. Stay tuned. By 1990, Zambia was often referred to as one of the few countries in Africa where state publishing had, with negative consequences, taken root. At that time, the publishing industry was passing through its third phase. The first was the pre-independence period, when an open-door policy with various publishers operated in Zambia. The second phase was the post-independence era after 1964, when the nationalization of book publishing and distribution was in place in 1966, and a statutory organization was established to fulfill the two roles. The third phase started by mid-November 1991. With less than one month after assuming power, the newly elected government of the Movement for Multi-Party Democracy, MMD, declared the liberalization of the production and supply of educational materials in Zambia. The government's proclamation became a throughway for other educational publishers and suppliers to get into the field which previously had been the exclusive preserve of the Zambia Educational Publishing House, ZEPF. To date, Zambia has recorded a slight increase in the number of authors in the publishing industry. Notwithstanding the development, the industry has not received a fair share of support. Most bookshops and stands are more concentrated in selling books written and published by the international community. On the other hand, the support that the book industry has received cannot be compared to that given to the music industry. The music industry has to some extent performed better than the book industry. This has been attributed to the time spent to produce a piece in either industry. But in as much as the book industry takes time to produce a copy, support has remained marginal in Zambia. The copyright law, on the other hand, has not been fully enforced to punish offenders despite numerous concerns by affected parties. Reprographic rights, too, have not been well defined to the understanding of the businesses dealing in copy shops. A number of people managing copy shops have little knowledge of the law surrounding reprography in Zambia. I know a bit of it, yeah, but I know it. I know it, yeah. Uh, this is where um, uh, you, you run a copy that is restricted to run or to photocopy it, yeah. Do you go ahead and photocopy those particular books? Yeah, we do, we do, we do. We go ahead and we photocopy them, yeah. Well, we photocopy them in the sense that they are coming through somebody else, yeah. Yeah, we photocopy them. The situation is not very different from people managing bookshops, as echoed by a Lusaka bookseller. Copyright is um, uh, selling uh, something which uh, someone has produced, then without getting permission from the owner. That's all I understand about uh, copyright. But. What else could be the factor behind the slow development of an industry in a country like Zambia? I caught up with some of Zambia's authors whose contribution to the industry and the nation has gone unnoticed. In separate meetings, the duo share their views about the growth of the Zambian book industry. It's slow, but it's starting to happen. And mostly authors are developed by publishers. You, you, we have very few authors who do it by themselves. It's very, very difficult. 
because uh, there's very little money to be made from uh, fiction writing. Though I must admit that some of my colleagues have, have made it. They've um, sold quite a bit and uh, they've sold some uh, plays and some film scripts. I, I must say speaking up. Publishing in this country is extremely difficult. This is something that uh, all authors know because we do not have a well-developed publishing company that can subsidize educational materials. So edu educational materials which are being published are actually published using personal funds. So people find it very difficult to publish because they don't have enough money. I'll give you an example. Right now I have manuscripts with a, a publishing company. I paid a total of 86000 that was the co I mean that was the cost, 86000 but I paid only half of that. And now I'm sourcing for the other half so that uh, these six books can be on the shelves. So you can see how difficult it is. But I'm struggling so that I get money and uh, pay and they publish. And in the end, the public is going to benefit from that. It is extremely difficult for authors in this country. Many authors will tell you that because we do not have a well-established company that can subsidize educational material publication. The Zambia Reprographic Rights Society, ZASO, is an organization established by Zambian authors and publishers. And when we talk about the reprographic right, we're talking about the, one of the many rights that somebody has, a copyright holder. So it's, it's, a, it's a concept that's stemming from intellectual property, from copyright. So a copyright has a set of rights. There's the rights, uh, the paternity right, the moral rights, and there is one of them, the reproduction right. So that's the link between reprography and the right to reproduction. Reprographic rights are owned by any person that is a copyright owner, someone that may have created a work and it's a copyright work. They will automatically own reprographic rights. They will have reproduction rights because reprographic rights are coming from the right to reproduce. So when someone creates a work, you, have, you, you automatically have with you in the set of copyrights the reproduction right. Therefore, anyone that has copyright has reprographic right. But the authors feel that ownership of reprographic rights is not practical in Zambia. They have cited unlicensed copy shops as a major letdown. And as much as uh, we want that to be practical in our country, definitely intellectual property is not something that is old or something that is being practiced. Many authors are not exposed to these issues of intellectual property. We do learn about it, and uh, we do not know how our works can be protected. Because uh, until recently, we did not know which organization we should join and which organization can protect our properties. Although we, were, we are all aware as scholars because of our experience worldwide, we all know that it's important to have your works protected. That's right. But as of, as of now, in this country, really, to be honest, until recently, we didn't know where to go. Uh, I would like to at least appeal to all those who own these machines where they reproduce. Always remember that... Um, Whenever you are reproducing this piece of material, somebody sat down and spent some time, hours and hours on end, to produce that book or to produce that material. And that person should be paid. So my appeal really is also to people to recognize Zaso and know that Zaso is working for the good of everybody so that the writers and the readers are happy and we produce more materials for the Zambian market. Illegal reproduction of books 
which is an act of reproducing literary work without the author's consent, has also hindered progress in the development of the local book industry. The act is complemented by the escalating number of copy shops opening up for business purposes. The development has become a source of worry to intellectual property specialists. It's quite worrying that a lot of people have been photocopying. We've seen an extent where people would photocopy the entire book that belongs to someone and they would utilize that book without the owners of the books drawing any, 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 any acknowledgement or even any remuneration out of it. Uh, remember that uh, for every work, including a book that is being written, the author of that book spent their intellect, spent a lot of time to try and put that book up together. There's a lot that goes on. They, sometimes, they even end up paying certain publishers to publish the books. So there's a lot that goes on, of which the moral thing to be done is that people must be recognized for the works that they, they, they've done. So if you find someone just goes there and photocops the whole book, literally the, owner, the author of the book gets away with nothing, I think it's not fair. People must be, the, the owners of the works must also get uh, what is due to them. The challenges in the operations of the society vis-a-vis -vis protection of intellectual property are many. The law as it is, yes, it's a law that's been there for a very long time. To us, it may be clear because we, we understand it and we have read and researched in depth. But to other people out there, you know, law is not always crafted in a layman's language. It's, 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 a, it's in a legal way. So someone needs to have some, some other understandings for you to be able to interpret certain sections of the law. So we face a challenge because people want to interpret the law the way they feel it's, it should suit them. So that poses a challenge to us in trying to implement what we're trying to implement because you find that you have diverse interpretations by people of the provisions on which we are relying. The other challenge that we are also facing in trying to implement this is uh, because there's a lot of piracy out there. Um, we, we know of places and uh, uh, areas where there's this piracy where it goes on. So it becomes a challenge when you want to license those that are legitimately doing business. Of course, they are not involved in pirating. They are not uh, re reproducing these books for sale illegally uh, without the permission of the owners or the actual publisher. So that becomes a challenge because when you're trying to license those people, they want to equate to those pe themselves to those other people. They want to say, why don't you license them also? But you have to realize that we cannot, uh, we cannot um, license illegality. Similar challenges are also being experienced by authors, especially on copyright infringement. That is a difficult job. As an individual, it's very, very difficult. You can't do it alone. Um, I must say, at one time, I walked into a bookshop and I found they were selling one of my books. And when I asked them, the following day when I went back, the books had disappeared from the shelf. So it's very difficult when you are doing it all by yourself. Another time, I found uh, one of my books was on the internet. And that one, I couldn't really... Uh, do anything about it. I tried making queries and things like that. The next thing, it was removed from the internet. So it's very difficult on your own. But right now we are working on uh, something and we get the government support. We have ZASO and ZASO is working towards protecting the rights of the writers and so that we can be making money out of our work. In a country like Zambia, I will say that uh, because we are not as developed in terms of sophistication in the pub uh, publication or the industry of publishing, our works are um, quite safe. However, this does not mean that we do not want our work to be protected. Major problem in this country is about uh, our works being photocopied. That is being done, and you only know when you see one on the street. From that angle, I think our work is not safe, because a number of uh, books produced by our colleagues 
and uh, you know you walk on the Cairo Road, you find the book there on the floor. But you look at it, you know that this is not the original quality. This is not the original book. You know that it has been uh, photocopied and bound and is being sold. From that angle, we are not safe. Psychop Managing Director says the public needs to be educated about illegal reprography. I think it calls for a lot of sensitization. The, it calls for a lot of sensitization and I must also commend the media, even in what you are doing like right now, the, the media should be utilized as a tool to reach out. Because we've seen that there are a lot of people that might think, well, it's just one of those things, I'm just photocopying. And, uh, but how much knowledge do they have in terms of protection? And when I talk about protection, I would also look at including law enforcement. How much information do they have about uh, these kind of illegalities? So it is supposed to ride so much on... Uh, a lot of sensitization. There is need to sensitize the public on reprographic rights so that they can really get to understand what these rights are and they should get to, uh, to know to say uh, violating of these rights is as good as violating any other copyright uh, law. So I think sensitization should be a key in this case. The copy shop businesses and bookshops feel very little has been done to sensitize the public on the prographics and wants the Zambia Prographic Rights Society to do something about the matter. The most important thing is to sensitize people because some of the people, um, uh, more especially those who are dealing in books, most of them they are doing things through ignorance. People know that uh, copyright maybe is just in music. Okay, they don't know that it extends to other things like books and other things. So, sensitizing people is the most important thing, more especially, more especially in the market, so that people are aware that what they are doing, they can be taken to court. It seems it's not, uh, to me, I, I thought it was not all that active, because I just heard of it, but I've never heard it's, it being implemented. Or, been at, uh, at the, what are the public domain to scrutinize whatever, yeah. I think uh, what they could bring on board, it could be maybe to authorize some uh, individuals or some uh, particular companies to be doing that for them, yeah. I think that, that's what I can say on that. And uh, in fact, uh, you know, everything, to, uh, I mean, to, to, to have power, to have force, is to make sure that there are people on the ground. Yeah. There are people on the ground to sensitize people about the, cop the copyright materials. Yeah, first, of, first thing is uh, sensitization. So that p uh, uh, even if people are implicated or are, uh, are put to task about those materials, they know that we learned somewhere. Because you cannot know when you are not taught. Yeah. Authors also feel massive campaigns are needed to keep the vice. Zambians don't think stealing ideas is a crime. Actually, they even get surprised when you start asking questions. I don't know. I, I feel that we really need a lot of education in that field because most Zambians really don't think it's a crime to get a whole textbook and go and photocopy it, you know? And even sell photocopied material. They don't think it's a crime. So they, 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 they need to be educated. Maybe it's because of lack of publicity, because I know the government wing that uh, protects these things is very, very aware and is uh, strict. So if they can be aware of this sector of uh, protection, so to speak, maybe they can do something, because I know on uh, videos, these have been highly uh, publicized, and they do take action. But when it comes to scholar work, it has been something which has been very silent, which is unfortunate. But once they are told how to go about, I think they can do something. But uh, it's not a very serious matter in our country because it's just basically photocopying. Whereas in other developed countries, people are very sophisticated and uh, they can... Uh, 
do this photo, I mean, not just photocopying, but plagiarism to the extent that uh, your book can be plagiarized maybe half or three quarters and to be someone's work. So here it has not reached that alarming stage. But the issue is we have to start from somewhere to protect our property as scholars. However, measures are already in place to ensure the public is sensitized about reprography and the need to protect intellectual property. In terms of uh, coffee shops, the places where people are offering reproduction services, what we do for those places is uh, our licensing officers will visit those places. They will inform them about what is required of them because well, we're carrying on sensitization as we are licensing because a lot of people don't know what it is. So we have to make them understand before they actually obtain that license. So someone has to, we don't necessarily have an application at the moment that you can make, but we have um, documentation that you need to fill out for you to obtain the license, which includes we have a licensing agreement that gives the terms and uh, the extent of reproduction that must be done. So you have to fill out the licensing agreement. After you fill out that licensing agreement, and then they issue you an invoice, which um, may have uh, terms to it, negotiated terms according to what we negotiate with our licensing officers. And then thereafter, upon completion of your payment, we issue you a reproduction, uh, a copyright reproduction certificate. With all these plans in the pipeline, will the copy shop owners and booksellers accept to be licensed? That's a very good development because uh, people need to benefit from their sweat. Yes, uh, even me, I, 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 I write, I write pamphlets. I wouldn't want to find someone selling something which I've sweated for and benefit from that. That's a good move. We just need people to be sensitized. Yeah, I, for one, I may need to be sensitized. Then uh, we may need also to be uh, to, 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 to know what to do when his pupils bring those books to run them. Uh, are we supposed to be given maybe, let's say, the certification to be doing those books? Or are the owners or the authors of those books uh, supposed to, 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 to legalize us, or I don't know. That's the question that I can, I can give out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zaso, on the other hand, cautions the public on limitations that will come with licenses. Um, in terms of restrictions, uh, we, well, we can speak about the provisions of the law. Um, they have what we call exceptions and limitations, which are they obviously to cover certain situations that are may may not fall under uh, the category of works of, of uh, activities that should be licensed so uh, they have they go as they, they only go as far as in terms of education our act actually is very clear if you're going to talk about education the reproduction right is exclusively vested in the owner of the work thereby what it means is if you buy a book for instance you buy a book ho authored by uh, dr hantobolo that history book that everyone has used before if you buy that particular book and then you decide to make a reproduction of that book, you do not buy the rights in that book. So which means that the reproduction right is vested in Dr. Hantowell. So for you to want to make reproductions of that work, you need to seek permission from him. Now, uh, you, you need to seek permission because the law does not allow you to, repro to make reproductions in any way. The only way that you can make a reproduction and it will, be, it will be termed as fair dealing is maybe, if you're not doing it for an educational purpose, you just want to read. You've heard about this book, it's so famous, you just want to read. And the only thing that you do in making that reproduction maybe is just make a page of that. Psychop sheds more light on the consequences which will come with infringing the rights on intellectual material. My, my thinking is that licensing will regulate the illegal, uh, it will regulate the industry. It to regulate the industry to, to, to an extent that uh, anyone found wanting, it would be easier to deal with them because one, they, 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 they would have been told what it is, two, they would be holders of such licenses to make sure that the, these are things. So I'm sure when the licenses are given, even the do's and don'ts, 
will be spelled out such that uh, the industry will be regulated. And only if we have an, a, a, a protected or a regulated industry, we will see that even for the part, on the part of the, the authors or the people, it will start generating, it will be a motivating factor. When they see that authors are being able to draw uh, to, to draw their much desired uh, uh, income from their works, people will now start, it, they'll take it as a motivation. So we'll see a lot of people getting into the industry because the industry would have been regulated through licensing. And what would authors like to see happen in the book industry? My bone of contention is with the government and the Ministry of Education. I feel that uh, they should ensure that recognized Zambian books and Zambian authors are read in schools. If a book is recognized as a good book, it must ensure that this uh, novel or storybook it goes out into schools and the author is paid. That will encourage the teachers, I mean the writers, to write and is, is knowing that they are recognized. I'm saying that it's important that this topic of um, protecting people's works has started because nobody talked about this. And I should thank you for bringing it on, onto the television so that people should know this is important in terms of development of educational books in this country. Otherwise, this industry is going to be killed. We shall be depending on materials from outside the country, which to a greater extent is not a good thing for the country. There is need for members of the public to support the book industry by buying local and original books. This will make the future of the local book industry brighter and contribute greatly to the development of the country. This is where we come to the end of this week's edition of News Index. We have been looking at the law of copyright and the graphics in Zambia. We have spoken to a number of stakeholders in this particular field, the authors, the Zambia Reprographic Society, ZASO, and copy shop owners to find out how well they are doing in safeguarding reprography in Zambia. I have been your host for this week, Mark Fasson Mukuka. Be sure to join us next week for yet another exciting News in Depth program. And on behalf of my camera person, Jawadu Smairi, it's bye and God bless you.